Well, good morning and welcome to Christchurch St Albans this morning. It's Sunday the 21st of March 2021 and I'm Jeremy the Vicar. It is great to be worshipping with you today and um, uh, it's a communion service so do be ready for that later in the service. Have some bread, some wine ready that you can share with all those uh, in your household. I'm also aware that we've been through quite a lot in the last year, Uh, some extraordinary things, and there may be some difficulties and anxieties and stresses that we've been highly and fully aware of, and we've taken steps to address them. There may be other things that we've yet to fully acknowledge in our lives, and I'm hoping that during the service today we will have the opportunity to do that. And we're going to start by singing together this song. We've, we've had it once before in the last couple of weeks. I raise in the hallelujah, but it's to do with um, facing up to the storms of life and yet knowing that in our praises we meet with the Lord who comes to give us victory and triumph over the circumstances under which we labour. I raise an hallelujah. <laughs> Praise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. Praise a hallelujah Heaven comes to fight for me I'm gonna sing In the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated the king is alive. I raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me. I raise a hallelujah. I will watch the darkness flee. I raise a hallelujah. In the middle of the mystery, I'll raise a hallelujah. Fear you lost your hold on me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is alive. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Oh, I 
So that song is, is a really good way to start entering in to worship. And now we've got two items that I hope you'll really enjoy, but which will also give you permission to think and to pray about the way the lockdown has been for you. Firstly, we have a spoken word lament from uh, the Evangelical Alliance. They've um, uh, One of their staff has produced uh, this wonderful uh, um, performance piece, actually, and um, uh, reflecting on, on the lockdown and what it's meant to us and, and how we may have felt uh, strange, uh, we may have felt that God's been distant, we may have felt um, things that we've not experienced before, and he leads us through that. Uh, and so we're going to watch that, and then after that, the music team are going to be singing to us a song called Holy Water. And uh, some of you may know it, but it's, it's not uh, particularly one that we would be singing along to, but it's definitely one that you'd want to listen to because it calls us back to the, the simplicity of our faith, to, to the heart of our faith, which is God with us in everything. Uh, and even in times like this, uh, we know that the Lord uh, is with us and we can be restored to him and be refreshed and renewed. So uh, a lament followed by uh, a song. When rumours of a virus turn to evening government updates, when headlines move to daily news of fresh infection growth rates, when schools are closed and holidays postponed, everyone's asking who's been furloughed? A slight change of plans, just wash your hands, it's like the flu, remember? Let's stay at home, do pee with Joe, it'll be over by September. How long, oh Lord? When streets resemble ghost towns at peak lockdown regulation, when we crave a crowd, cry out for connection from full-blown isolation, when millions search for online church with newfound innovation. Everything's online, but getting loo roll is a hassle and trust in powers eroded by trips to Barnard Castle. It all ends in tears. There's no quick fix when you're a table of seven, but there's a rule of six. How long, oh Lord? When our dreams are dashed, ambitions strangled, Christmas plans destroyed, and a righteous anger rises at the murder of George Floyd. And when families are asked to grieve behind masks, at graves of precious loved ones past, Life is in limbo, we're stuck in between. Herd immunity or miracle vaccine, 2020 shortchanged by COVID-19, and children can't get the food that they need. How long, oh Lord? With ever-growing numbers of the daily deaths presented, when this is the new normal, when what life was like lamented, and will people stop using the word unprecedented? We are zoomed out, homeschooled out, restrictions extended, and those we love die unattended. How long, oh Lord? I've been deprived of peace. I've forgotten what prosperity is. So I say my splendor is gone and all that I'd hoped for from the Lord and my soul is downcast within me. And yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness.
So having experienced both those recordings, now is a good moment to bring ourselves to the Lord in prayer. And the, Joel, in his lament, used some words from Jeremiah's lament. And I want to continue from that text. Because it's good to remind ourselves that whatever the difficulties we faced and the anxieties and the stresses, that actually the Lord's love prevails. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. That's something to rejoice in. For his compassions never fail. His love for us never fails. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Constant renewal. God is always starting over. And we can start over this morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore 
I will wait for him. And we might want to do this this morning. Reach out to him and allow him to be your portion, to be the thing that satisfies you. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. The Lord wants to be good to everyone, but for those who place their hope in him and who seek him, there is a special blessing. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke while he is young. So let's wait quietly on him and perhaps as men and women, whatever age we are, we can actually take this opportunity to realign ourselves with him, to take the yoke again, that our hearts may seek him and that we may hope in him. Heavenly Father, in this most difficult of years which we've experienced, turn our hearts again. May we recognize your faithfulness. that your mercies are new every morning, that you are good to those who seek you. Refresh us today. Renew our hearts in these days. And lead us forward. And we thank you that even near the presence of death or in death, we know that because of your great love, we are not consumed forever. But we will endure. In Jesus' name, amen. And now we're going to sing again together two songs again um, wonderful worship songs the first will be very familiar to you the second the words will be familiar but uh, Malcolm has written a new tune and it's very effective I think a new tune to the words so hopefully you'll be able to join in but uh, bring yourself uh, in, into his presence as we worship together with these two songs Come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. Drink up the water, come and thirst no more. Come all you sinners, come find his mercy, come to the table he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness, find what you
praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, praise Him for the wonders of His love. Praise God, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him. So we've sung God's praises again, and it's a wondrous thing in our eyes to be able to worship him. I'm delighted that Jonathan's agreed to be interviewed. This is Jonathan, my warden, uh, and um, Jonathan's the technician as well, so a lot of the the fancy new kit that we're using uh, is working because Jonathan's been beavering away behind the scenes. So thank you for that, and that's pretty time-consuming, isn't it, Jonathan? It has been, certainly has been, but it's getting slightly easier. Oh, that's a good one. But I was thinking about um, 
this this kind of lamenting that, that uh, and sort of mourning something that we've lost uh, because of the lockdown year, and that's something that we do uh, year by year in in Lent is is kind of we abstain from things in order to uh, touch into that that sense of mourning and all that. And you, and you've done something very special this year, haven't you? I was interested in. Uh, well, I wouldn't call it very special, but it's it's challenging. Um, <laughs> I am fasting between the hours of getting up and six o'clock in the evening. So I have nothing to eat between when I get up and 6 p.m. Uh, I won't tell you what happens after 6 p.m. <laughs> uh, I do have drinks during the day, mm. tea and coffee. I did try a couple of years mm. ago not to do that, mm. and I got the most horrendous headaches. Um, so let's call that a caffeine addiction and leave it at that. So I have teas and coffees, but I don't have any food. Um, and then I, when I find myself uh, thinking about food, then I spend some a few moments in prayer. So when mm. the pang, ha, hunger pangs come, right. um, not any huge great prayers, but just just mm. I just think of more mm. spiritual things at that mm. point, and fire up an arrow <laughs> prayer on right. some topic or other that I've been thinking about during the day. And has it has it been um, has it been doable? I mean, has it? Yeah. What, how many weeks are we in now? Five? Is this yes, five? This, this, is some, this is the right. fifth Sunday of Lent. Yeah. Okay, well, I, I'm, I'm fine, actually. It's, it's, it's surprisingly easy. Yeah. Um, I don't know why, but it just is. Uh, I also am losing some weight, which is a, a very good byproduct. Um, and if I'm very, very honest, was probably the primary motivator in the yeah. first place. I think during lockdown, I've just put on so much mm. weight being at home a lot. Mm. Um, up at the church sometimes and I just not exercised as perhaps I might have done um, and this was a way of um, perhaps losing a few pounds I'm a, I, I got to as heavy as I had ever been right. in my life and yeah. that wasn't good yeah. so yeah so well, that's good then so yeah. it'd be interesting to see um, what happens through the rest <laughs> of Lent and whether it all, and all goes back on again <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, dear. I do miss some things I mean at some <laughs> Obviously, when it gets to six o'clock, I don't think, well, I'll have my breakfast now. So the, the, the porridge is still sitting there un, uneaten, and the, uh, uh, the pan au chocolat uh, are, is still in the fridge. So those things remain uneaten, um, and I just go straight to dinner. Oh, that's good. I did, uh, I did notice that you very carefully said you didn't eat from when you got up to, uh, to, to, until six o'clock. So are you, are you going to bed really late and kind of lying through until lying in until no, after midday? No, and I don't eat anything in bed before I get <laughs> oh, up no. either. Okay, in case you're that's thinking right. that. So no, I go to bed sort of. I'm a quite a late person, yeah. so I do go to bed late, mm. um, and I get up at various times whenever. Uh, I mean, Virgin phoned me this morning. At least I think it was them at mm. half past seven mm. in the morning with some cold call. Mm. Uh, they've done it before, and mm. I told them to go away in mm. uncertain terms. And today, I just ignored them. But uh, yeah. no, I, I, I live a normal day, yeah. um, mm. and then in the evening, sometimes mm. I'll, I'll sometimes I'll begin to think about mm. food and not really cook anything until half seven. So mm. sometimes that's, it's, that's it's really that long. impressive. Yeah. That's yeah, really yeah. good. Really yeah. interesting to see the. Uh, the, the fruit of, of doing that, but but earlier in the week when we were talking about this, you, you, um, and we were talking about the the sort of the hidden cost of lockdown and everything, and the pandemic, you said something really interesting, which I, I has really stayed with me. Could you just share what you said? Yeah, I was just contemplating um, at home, and I just looked towards the fireplace in the lounge, and there on the floor were Austin's Christmas presents, um, and I thought. My, my my goodness, you know, it's it's been all this time, mm. it's now March, and his presents are still mm. undelivered. Mm. Uh, he doesn't know what they are. Um, and it, that was just really a visual reminder yeah. of where we'd got to um, and, and, and what the cost has that been. Yes. I haven't seen him for, for months, mm. um, and, and obviously I miss him, and mm. I'm sure I'm not the only one, mm. but that was just sort of the trigger... Right. That, that, that made me think how, how hard it's actually been. Yeah, it, it hit me very powerfully because it's a kind of a, a, a visual reminder of something that we could overlook, but he's actually very real, you know, th three months in and you still haven't seen him, you know, and that's just so unusual. 
I've also still got my Christmas cards up, but that's another story. <laughs> That's just sad. That is That's sad. sad. I'll grant you that. <laughs> uh, anyway, no. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I, I know you. You don't find it easy being in front of the camera, but uh, thank you for that. No, I'm better the other side of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but now we're going to hand over to Stuart, who's going to read for us, and then Dawn's coming to preach. These, this Bible reading is taken from the book of Jeremiah, chapter thirty-one. Verses 31 to 34, beginning to read at verse 31. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbour or say to one another, Know the Lord, because they will all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sins no more. This Bible reading is taken from the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verses 5 to 10, beginning to read at verse 5. In the same way, Christ did not take on himself the glory of becoming a high priest, but God said to him, You are my son, today I have become your father. And he says in another place, You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him and was designated to be God, to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi, I'm Dawn, a reader here at Christ Church St Albans. We are following the lectionary readings during Lent, and these readings have had a theme of covenant. The last four, four weeks we have heard what a covenant is, that God makes the first move, recognising we may always fall short of God's requirements of us, yet we are encouraged to stick with it and be prepared to change. This week, the theme is a covenant of the heart. And looking at the Jeremiah text, this has a theme of prophetic hope, where the indwelling of God in the people of Israel's hearts would seal this new covenant. No longer will sacrifices be needed, as Jesus will come to shed his blood to redeem our sins, the ultimate sacrifice. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes with some of these texts, you think, well, what happened before? Why do we need a new covenant? So we're going to explore that next. The people of Israel had turned away from serving God, a break of the original covenant, They had turned to other gods and those who claimed to be prophets who were not of God. The people were not responding to just being given written laws to follow. They needed a change of heart. Jeremiah was often known as the prophet of doom. And people were tired of hearing his warnings from God. In Jeremiah 7... He says, obedience and service cannot be used instead of sacrifice. And the law had to be followed to remain in covenant with God. And yet the people of Israel did not listen. Jeremiah's ministry was during the Babylonian capture of Judah. And Jeremiah was under palace arrest and prophesied what was to come and that God's judgment was in response to their disobedience. 
In Jeremiah 23 showed that people were choosing to follow false hope by other gods people had put their faith in. Yet Jeremiah maintained hope that God could lead the people of Judah to salvation. And in Jeremiah 29, shared that the people need to be patient whilst in exile, waiting for God to fulfil his plans until they could return to Judah, to rebuild the temple and reimagine their faithfulness in God. There would be a new covenant to replace the one they had broken. What a promise. All that's being asked is to be patient. The old law was broken as it was based on law written in books or stone tablets, which the people did not fulfil. The new covenant where the laws would be written in people's hearts so that they would gladly be in relationship with him. A new king would be in Judah, chosen by God, from the family of David, who would rule wisely and well. There would not be a need to be reminded of the law, as in the new covenant. The laws are written on people's hearts, as a forgiven people. In Ezekiel 36, the Holy Spirit was blessed into people's hearts. In the Old Testament, it is believed that the Holy Spirit did not indwell in people. And the New Testament says that all believers in God's community have the Holy Spirit in and on their hearts. Wait, be patient, change is coming. The Old Testament required sacrificial offerings. The payment for sin under the new covenant would be because of the coming suffering servant, the Messiah who would make the ultimate sacrifice for the redemption of sins. And this is all as part of God's forgiveness and would remember their sins no more. And that's from the end of verse 34 in the Jeremiah text today. And you may be reminded in Deuteronomy 6 as part of our liturgy, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. And this is reflected in New Testament texts as well, Matthew 22, Mark 12 and Luke 10. The law transcends both Old, both old and New Testaments. So one sec. <coughs> The new covenant has three factors to it. The first, total forgiveness, and that is a total forgiveness that is forever. God will forgive and remember their sins no more. No golden calf worshipping, no false gods. Mo Moses brings God's laws to the people. And in Hebrews 10... Religious duties, same, some sacrifices that do not take away sin. Jesus was offered to take away all of our sins. And the Hebrews text too is a reminder again in the times of Jesus of the one high priest and king. Similar to Melchizedek, but he is not the same as Jesus, although some writers do believe that he is. Secondly, ongoing transformation. So we've got this total forgiveness that's forever. We now have ongoing transformation. The people will be changed in their minds and written onto their hearts. In Ezekiel, again, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. I will remove your heart of stone and give a heart of flesh. The problem was not the original covenant. It was because of the people that this had to change. God was a faithful husband. And we need to be led to the one who is faultless. Knowing God inside our very being. And in Romans 7, we're reminded, for when we were controlled by sin, we bore the fruit for death. Release from the law can serve in a new way. 
go on being filled by the Holy Spirit and ask God for more of his Holy Spirit. So in addition to being totally forgiven forever and being on a path of ongoing transformation, there is a new identity and a new relationship with God. I will be their God and they will be my people. Everyone who receives Jesus knows God in their very heart. Ephesians chapter 1, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so you will know him better. Let us pray. Lord, we commit to you today to write onto our hearts that we can serve you better each and every day with wisdom and confidence. Amen. Thank you for that talk, Dawn, and it's great to be reminded about those truths about living in a covenant of grace and love. We're now going to proceed towards communion, and I suggest that you get your bread and wine ready now, and uh, you can pause if you need to, and then we'll uh, go ahead. I'm going to say the Eucharistic prayer, and the responses that you need will appear on the screen. And so we know that the Lord is here because his spirit is with us. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your own image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we too may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners and with love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us, the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts in your presence, form us into the likeness of Christ, building us into a living temple that resounds with your glory. Bring us at the last, dear Lord, with all the saints, to the vision of that eternal splendor for which you have created us, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in whom, With all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. And so, sisters and brothers, draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And as you receive for yourselves, be reminded that this is the body of of Christ that was broken for you to feed your body and your soul that this is the blood of Christ that was shed for you feed on him in your hearts and be thankful and now a prayer Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others as you were servant to all and gave up your life and died for us. Amen. We thank you for feeding us, dear Lord, with your own body and blood. We offer you our souls and our bodies as living sacrifices. Send us out by the power of your Spirit that we may live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And so as our worship draws to a conclusion, we are going to dig back into our archive again and see and hear this wonderful a song performed by some of our young people that they recorded in the summer.
So we've reached the end of our worship this morning and uh, I hope that you've met with the Lord and that you'll continue to meet with him in the rest of the day. We will keep you in touch about Easter. We are hoping to do something live for Easter but we will also be online. Um, And there will be something on Maundy Thursday, something on Good Friday but again it will be a mixture of live and uh, online worship. But we, we will keep you in touch with that. And so, as we finish our worship services, but go out to serve the Lord in other ways, may Christ crucified draw you to himself. To find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you and all those for whom you pray, now and forever. Amen. So let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.